Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome back to another post-game reaction, episode 169. The Oilers flew into Winnipeg and flew out with a victory. Make it four in a row, play La Bamba, baby, Oilers win 3-1. to one. But it wasn't all going to be sunshine and roses, because for the most part of this game, it was the Hollabuck Vesna winning goalie that was stopping the Oilers. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. For the first two periods, it looked like the Oilers were going to get squadoosh, gadoosh, zilch, zero, nada, nothing, donut hold, shot out. It was looking bad, looking bleak. Then the third period, boy, oh boy, what a third period it was. Little squeakers go in, and before you know it, game over. Oilers win, 3-1. Let's talk about it. Like I said, it didn't look good in the first period. First period goals. Oh, damn. Oh, who done it? Who done it? Bang. First period goal scored by Perfetti on the power play. Tipped in. Nice little pass there by Shifley, tipped in Perfetti. Just like that, Oilers down one nothing late in the first period on my dad. So the first period wasn't all a loss. It was a hard-fought first period. Shots were 12 to 8 for the Oilers after one. Unfortunately, the one that was late, 12 to 8. And unfortunately, one of those went in. And we move on, of course, because that's what we do. We go on, we move on, we get our own. Excuse me for a second here. Second period, a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of shots, a whole lot of hits, a whole lot of just neutral zone play back and forth. Refs are letting them play. I love to see that. I like the fact the refs are letting them play a little bit too much on both sides. If you ask me, refs are kind of getting away from calling everything to calling nothing. And all I want is consistency with these refs. Like I just want, are you going to call everything or are you going to call nothing? You can't call everything one period and then nothing for a period and then go back to the everything. It's either all or nothing. It, it, it's like your comedy. If you like the jokes, you like the jokes. If you like the guy's joke for this, but you don't like the guy's joke for that, it, you can't pick and choose what you like. Just, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, turn away. You, you can't just go after... Anyways, that's a different topic for a different day. So, second period comes around 10-10. Winnipeg turned it up in the shots. Oilers just kind of sat back a little bit. No, no harm, no foul, no goals. Which was good to see. Vander Kane got a cross-checking penalty, and Connor McDavid got an oh, yeah. Connor McDavid got an interference penalty. But yeah, like I said, they they went from calling minimal in the first to ticky tack in the second. Nothing in the third period. Again, they went back to calling nothing in the third period until they absolutely had to. And boy, oh boy, I'm glad they did. Oilers' first goal, like I said, we're talking about squeakers. You want to talk about a squeaker. Here it is right here, folks. The, the Oiler player in the middle of all those five Jets players, that's Darnell Nurse. Darnell Nurse takes a shot from there. Assists go to Yanmark and McLeod. Fifth assist for McLeod. First assist for Yanmark. Welcome back to the score sheet, Yanni. And just like that, we got ourselves a 1-1 hockey game. 6-5. 50 left in the third period. I mean, 31 shots, 23. Hey, ho, what do you know? Oilers get a second power play of the game. That's right, just the second power play of the game for the Oilers. But, but why? Why did it take so long? I don't know, because it's the National Hockey League. Anyways, again, this is the first goal here. I'll show it again here just for the people at home. Again, it squeaked. I mean, this one hullabuck should say. We want to get mad at Skinner for letting in soft goals, Campbell for letting in soft goals, Smith when he was here letting in soft goals, Koskinen letting in. The list goes on and on and on and on and on about, hey, we need to make that save. We need to make that save. That save right there should have been saved by Hullabuck. He was Vesna Hullabuck until that point. little tink in the armor, I would say, and oh boy, good tink it was because this happened a short while later. Wish I could show video, but I can't. 
With 2.14 left in the third period, Oilers on the power play. You know it. You like it. Leon, Leon, Dry Seidel, his 10th goal of the season, assisted by McDavid and Bouchard. McDavid's 21st assist and Bouchard's 17th. Oh, my gosh. Bouchard has 17 assists. Whew. He's racking up those miles on the assists. But, yeah, that, that's, a chip, that's your typical Leon Dry Settle shot, and it does squeak in short side. Another weak one, but it goes in, and we don't care. We like to see it. Like to see it. Here's the back side of it, and when I say it squeaks in, it squeaked in and just hit that back. It was a thing of beauty. The one niece assassin is back. Leon, you're back, buddy. Good to see you. Where have you been? Hopefully you stay this time. And we move on to the third goal, and I'm telling you, this goal was needed. 22 seconds left to play in the game. McLeod has the puck at center ice. He takes the shot. He gets the goal. Welcome to the score sheet. Ryan McLeod, your first goal of the season. Assisted by Hyman and CeCe. Just like that, Hyman has 11 assists. CeCe has 6. Dang, CeCe's getting those assists. Again, empty netter. It all counts, apparently. Even if you're Ovi, right? I, 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 I hate empty netters. I, I will emphasize it's an empty net goal. I'm not going to cheer and shout about an empty net goal. But this could boost the kid's confidence. This could help McLeod get, regain some of what he had last year. It can't hurt. He hasn't played well. Like, let's not sugarcoat it. Let's not put shit on a pig. Like, let's not put lipstick on a pig here. He has not played well. This could be the thing that boosts him to make him earn that contract that he signed in the offseason. Again, empty net goal, make it 3-1 Edmonton. We walk away with a victory. We head into a six-day break where our next game is against the Carolina Hurricanes at home. Now, why did we get a six-game break? Well, why did the Oilers get a break in the middle of the season, especially early in December? Because in case you didn't know, but now you do, Connor McDavid has been out awarded the Canada Walk of Fame. Congratulations to Captain Connor. That's an award, man. That, that's huge. For people that are saying, what is that equivalent to being high school prom in the States? Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, but just shut the fuck up. It, it's equivalent to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's a huge honor. It's a great thing. He's earned it. He deserved it. He's done a lot for hockey. He's done a lot for the community of Newmarket and Toronto and Edmonton and, and, and. He's, he's done a lot. But because of that, the Oilers asked for a few extra days off just so that Connor could attend and his friends, family, and teammates could go. And the league's like, we'll give you more than just one or two days off. We'll give you six. <laughs> we'll give you a week. If you take your week off, by the way, December 6th. Their last game was November 30th. And they don't play till December 6th. It's against Carolina. It's going to be at home. Is it going to be rest versus rust? I will let you know in my Oilers monthly preview coming up. How do I see the Oilers doing? Do I see them doing good? Do I see them doing bad? Who do I see doing good? Who does BWC doing good? Who does BW have? We will wait and see for that video. Anyways, guys, my name is Matt. As always, please comment, like, subscribe. Tell all your friends this bald man is back with a new hat. You like it? I like it. Anyways, guys, until next time, peace.